If y'all take a look inside of their feed troughs right now, you're gonna see that they got that commodity mix and I mixed it with a little bit of corn. And so right now these animals are out on the grass and I'm letting them walk around on it. Uh, this morning I went and I picked up fertilizer and when I was over at the fertilizer yard, I also picked up some crate pellets and um, tomorrow morning, the rain missed me yesterday. And so tomorrow morning, my field is dry enough for me to get my tractor out onto the field. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get back there and I'm going to uh, reseed my field. Anything that I, uh, you know, anything that I missed in terms of seeding, any portion of the seed, uh, any portion of the field that I had missed seeding, I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna seed my field again. And, but this, uh, this morning, you know, I've been thinking about this idea for a little while, for a couple of days now. And, uh, you know, the thing that I always say is do not ask for the opinions of man, right? Do not find your, do not find your comfort in the opinions of man because a lot of men are, are morons. You know, you give them a chance and they will immediately default back to their moron setting. I always say do not find your peace in, in the, do not find your peace and your comfort in, in the opinions of man. But always go and find your go and find your peace with God, right? I always say go and, and find your peace with God. You know the opinions of man do not mean anything. A lot of people, their opinions are their opinions because they are morons. You know you got to understand this that a lot of people are not walking around doing the greatest thing that they could ever do for their life. A lot of people are stuck in a situation where every single day they wake up and they put another shovel of nonsense on top of themselves. I always say a lot of people are stuck in a situation where all they have is a massive pile of nonsense and no money, right? And every morning they get up, they just pick up that shovel and they and they scoop another another scoop full of BS on top of themselves. They do. A lot of people are stuck in that situation. And you know, my my big thing about uh my big thing about life is do not find comfort or do not even uh you know do not find comfort and your peace in in the opinions of man. Go and find your peace with God, right? And so this morning, this is what, you know, this morning I've been thinking about this for several days. But if you take a look inside of their feed bin, I'm feeding them something, right? I'm feeding them corn and a commodity grain. That corn and a commodity grain is coming out of my pocket in terms of money. I am using my money to feed these animals. And so every single year I use about $10,000 to $15,000 a year to feed these animals that is mandatory this is what i mean by you know today I, i'm going to be fo uh, more focused on the business side of things but this is what i mean by under any circumstance i will have to pay money you know there is there is not any situation where i just sit around and i have a thumb up my rear end and everything works out for me and i don't have to pay a single dollar everything just works out for me i don't have to worry about anything under any circumstance, I will have to pay money. There, every single until the day, you know, I've always said that my plan is the day, you know, uh, I'm gonna be walking around in my field when I'm 150 years old, right? I'm gonna farm until I'm 150 years old, and when I'm walking around in my field farming, and I'm 150, and I drop dead in the middle of my field, in the middle of farming, you know, uh, you can just dig a hole right next to where I drop dead. You can dig a hole, bury me in it. And no, I do not want any of you at my funeral. Okay, I don't want any of you bums at my funeral at all. I don't care if nobody shows up at my funeral. If, if you find me dead in the middle of my field when I'm 150, you know, just go ahead and just and just, and just just dig a hole on the spot and bury me right there. That, that is my goal, right? I'm gonna farm until I'm 150 years old. That is my plan, right? And until, the, until that day, I will have to pay to feed these cattle. I will owe money. I will owe money in terms of feeding these cattle. I will have to pay. That That is not negotiable. It will cost me money to feed these cattle. And right now it's costing me about $10,000 to $15,000 a year. And so this is a strategy. When I talk about a financial strategy, this is a strategy that I call diverting the money. If I have to use the money under any circumstance, can I use the money for something else to make it more efficient? You know, that's the big question. So if I have to pay ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year right now, what else can I do with the money? Well, I can go to the bank and I can take a loan for about two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, if I take a loan for two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars, that's gonna cost me about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month. 
and about 20 to 30 percent of that loan will be amor you know excuse me 100 percent of the loan will be amortized but on the amortized on the amortization loan schedule about 25 to 33 percent of my loan is going to be uh, is going to be principal for about the first 10 years and so for the first 10 years i'll really only be losing about a thousand dollars a month you know anywhere from about 750 to a thousand dollars a month is what i'm losing out of my pocket the rest of it is going into equity on the property and so this weekend i'm going to go and take a look at two properties and you know i've thought about this and i always say make make your peace with god right make your peace with god and and do not take the opinions of man because a lot of people their opinions are what they are because they are they are morons and their default settings to always go back and act like a moron and so you know i'm gonna go and take a look at two properties this weekend and as i go through this whole process i'm gonna take y'all with me so that you get to see what i do you know i'm gonna be completely honest you know i make tens of thousands of dollars right i make tens of thousands of dollars a year in about three months i'll have about 20 grand right i'll have about 20 grand and if i have 20 grand and i take a loan if i have 20 grand and i take a loan and it costs me a thousand dollars a month then that 20 grand will float my debt service for over a year just the twenty thousand dollars alone if i don't make any more money throughout the entire year i will be able to pay for the loan for over a year with the money that i've made over the next three months running these cattle right and so you know when i go to the uh i'm gonna go and take a look at this piece of property i'm gonna go and take a look at two different pieces of property this weekend and if i like one of the properties i will have purchased it by next week it will take me less than a week and i will take y'all through i'll i will take y'all through it with me and I'll show you how to do it. And this is what I mean by if you're looking for money, you go and ask the banker. You do not go and ask your family and you do not go and ask your friends. You ask the banker. You know, if you need a quarter million dollars, you do not go and ask your family. You do not go and ask your friends. You go and ask the banker. And so if I, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and take a look at uh, two properties this weekend. I'm going to go and take a look at two properties this weekend. And if I like one of the properties, I will have purchased the property by next week. It will, it will take me one week. Not purchased it, but I will have it under contract by next week. And I will take y'all through it with me so that y'all get to see what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to be completely honest, you know. Okay, so, you know, like, this is what I mean by, you know, if I have the capacity... If I, if I am genuinely in a situation where I'm going to make $20,000 a month, right? If I'm genuinely in a situation where I'm going to make $25,000 a month, I'm not worried about the $1,500 that it's going to cost me. I'm just not. You know, I'm not focused on the $1,500 a month. Uh, the $1,500 a month that it costs me is completely negligible. I'm, I'm telling you, you should forget about the $1,500. Do not ever think about it again. If it costs you $1,500 a month... It, and take the entirety of the situation into consideration. If it costs you $1,500 a month to make $25,000, then focus on making the $25,000. Do not even worry about the $1,500. This is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you know, do not worry about the $1,500. Even if it costs you $3,500, do not worry about the $3,500. If you genuinely have a, a, a solid plan together and you're already making the money, if you can make $35,000 a month, $25,000 a month, and it's going to cost you even $3,500 a month, do not be worried about the $3,500 a month that it's going to cost you. Go and, and focus on making the thirty five grand. right? That is the big objective. That is the big, you know, y'all need to learn how to switch your mindset. You know, do not sit there and go, oh my God, this is going to cost me $1,000. I can't do this anymore. Oh my God, this is going to cost me $1,500. I can't do this anymore. You don't want to be stuck like that because if you get stuck like that, you will get, okay, the thing is, is that if you get stuck like that, you will start piling the BS up on top of you. Every morning that you wake up, you will pick up that shovel and you will scoop another pile, another scoop of BS and you will drop that BS right on top of the, of the pile that you have already made. And by the time that it gets so large that you can't move, it's too late and you cannot be saved. Under any circumstance, you cannot be saved. And so, you know, I got two properties that I'm going to go and look at this weekend. I got two properties that I'm going to go and look at this weekend. And if I do decide that I like one of them, I will have it under contract by next week. It will be that fast. 
I've already I've already decided that I'm going to do it. And when when it comes to financials, right? When it comes to running a business and what I, it's it's a financial strategy that I call re-diverting the money. If you are in a situation where you will have to pay money under any circumstance, there is legitimately not any circumstance where you can just not pay any money. You will have to pay money no matter what, right? If you have to pay money no matter what, then you can take that money and you can re-divert it. You can you can use it for something else. You know, like let's say you're trying to let's say you're getting into the cattle business and you're feeding your cattle and you realize, oh, you know, uh, under under any circumstance, it costs me about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month to feed about uh, fifty cattle. If I even if I have them on grass, it still costs me about a it costs me about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. To, okay, okay, but when it comes to business, you have to take the entirety, uh, the entirety of the situation in, into into consideration. Do not just pick and choose the things that you want, right? I've always said, do not pick and choose the things, because if you pick and choose the things, what's going to happen is if you pick and choose things that you want, you are going to pick and choose the things that you want, and then you're not going to, you're not going, you're going to completely avoid the things that you do not want. And if you are in that situation, the things that you do not want will pile up so large that your your business will get nowhere. You have to do everything for what it is everything not do not just go and say i want to do this part and i want to do this part oh i want to i want to put on a nice hat in the morning when i wake up i want to put on a nice hat and i want to put on a nice pair of boots and i want to run cattle but i don't want to grow the grass and i don't want to have to work seven days a week you cannot pick and choose the things that you want you have to do all of it or you do none of it because if you pick and choose the things that you want to do you're not going to make it anywhere and so this is a financial strategy that I call re-diverting the money. If you realize when you run your budget every single month and you're, run, and, you're, and you're looking at your business, and this is what I mean by you have to take the entire, and okay, so if you take a look at my business, right, and you, and you look at the entirety of my situation, I am currently making about fifteen, twelve, about $12,000 a month on these cattle. I'm making about $12,000 a month. This is part of the consideration. You have to get to this point first before you do anything else. I am on a 10 acre field making about $12,000, 12 to $14,000 a month running these cattle. That is about how much, and in, in about, uh, if I bring home a $12,000 check, I keep about 5,000 of it. If I bring home 14,000, I keep about 6,500 of it. I'm making about 60 to 80,000 dollars a year of net profit right now. This is a part of the entire consideration. You cannot just go and pick the and oh man, I want to run cattle and I want to put on a nice head and I want to put on nice boots, but I don't want to I don't want to grow the grass and I don't want to run a business. Well, running the well growing the grass and running the business is just as important and more important than you putting on that head in the morning and you putting on those boots. You know, and it's just as important as running the cattle. You have to you have to understand this. If you if you go and you say I want to run cattle but I don't want to run a business and I don't want to grow grass, you're going to get wrecked. You're going to get completely wrecked. You cannot run this business. You will not make any money running this business. And so this is a financial strategy that I call re-diverting the money. This is something that I do all the time. If I look at my budget and I take a look at my budget and I realize that I am having to utilize money under any circumstance. No matter what, I will have to invest a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month under any circumstance. I will have to invest about that much money every single month. But that money that I am investing is coming from my cattle business, and my cattle business is also making me about twelve to fourteen thousand dollars a month. So my cattle business is currently making about twelve to fourteen thousand dollars a month. I'm netting a profit of about sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year. And right now, I am currently in a situation where I am putting about $1,000 to $1,500 a month into cattle feed. Under any circumstance, I have to do it. So what, you know, this is, in this scenario, for the entirety of the scenario as it has been considered, if I re-divert the $1,000 to $1,500 that I am putting into the cattle, into cattle feed every single month, I'm having to put this money into cattle feed every single month, no matter what, right? I'm going to farm it until I'm, you know, I'm legit. I'm going to farm my entire life, right? I'm going to farm my, so for, for the entirety of my existence, I will have to pay for cattle feed. There is legitimately not any situation where I just do not have to pay anything and my cattle will, will just grow on their own. There is that, that situation does not exist. If that was my plan, that would be a horrible plan. 
And so when I take a look at everything for what it is, the entirety of the situation, I am going to farm for the entirety of my life seven days a week. I am going to farm. I am currently running a business, a cattle business that is making me twelve to fourteen thousand dollars a month, and I net a profit of about sixty to eighty thousand a year. As of right now, I am investing about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month in cattle feed, and no matter what, I have to invest about that much. If commodity prices go up, I will have to invest more. And in this situation, if I if I believe that it is better for me to redirect the money, I'm going to take the thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. I'm going to take the thousand to fifteen hundred dollars that I am putting into cattle feed, and I'm going to buy a 50, 50 acre piece of land with it. I'm going to buy a 50 acre piece of land with it, and if I buy that 50 acre piece of land, I now have an opportunity to increase my revenue. If I'm making twelve to fourteen thousand dollars a month on a ten acre field, I will more logically I will make more on a fifty acre field. You know, if you give me a fifty acre field, I will probably make more money on that fifty acre field than I do on this ten acre field, right? Logically, let's just put two and two together. I probably will. And so, in this scenario, if I have the if, if I believe that I should redirect the money, then I will redirect the money. This is it's a financial strategy. You know, if you believe, you know, and you take the entirety of, of, of everything into consideration, right? Then then if it is better to redirect the, to redirect the money, then redirect the money. And you can do this with anything. You know, I did this with my rent when I took a quarter million dollar loan and, you know, everything, right? You can do it with anything. And so, you know, I've been taking a look at my budget. I've been taking a look at my budget and I took a good look at it and I was like, in this scenario that I am currently in, if I take the money that I am investing into, buy into buying cattle feed every single month, just that money will be enough money for me to buy about 50 acres of land. And if I purchase 50 acres of land and I grow a dairy quality hay on that land, I can bring it back and feed my animals with it. And I won't have to feed grain anymore. I can, you know, because in terms of what I got going on, you have to always consider the entirety of the situation. And in, in terms of what I got going on, I have the capacity to grow a dairy quality hay. I know I do, right? I know how to do it. You got to fertilize it properly, and you take uh, and you take forage analysis of of the of the of the hay, right? And you know, and realistically, I want to be bringing home a hay that is about twelve to uh, twelve to fourteen percent protein and sixty to sixty-five percent TDN. That is what I'm looking for, right? I'm not just going to go out onto a field and say, "Oh my God, this grass is blooming on my field," you know, and I got a nice hat on and I got nice boots on. Oh my God, my grass is looking nice today. That's not that's not the plan, right? You know, if I fertilize the grass correctly, plant the proper cultivar of grass and, and harvest it at the proper stage of development, then I could genuinely grow a grass that is 12 to 14 percent protein and 60 to 65 percent TDN. And if I do that, I can bring it back and I can feed it to my animals. And when I feed it to my animals, I will not have to feed them the grain anymore. That is the entirety of the plan. And so by this weekend... By this week, I'm going to go and take a look at the, at the two different properties this weekend. And if I like the properties, if I like either one of the properties, I am going to have it under contract by next week. And so I'm going to show you all how I do it and what I mean by, you know, if you want, if you need money, the, the person you go and talk to is the banker. And if you want to create cash flow, okay, so in terms of generating cash flow, the idea of generating cash flow, I've already said this like 15 times, and the answer is not going to change. If you need to generate cash flow, the way you do it is you le oh, I'm not going to say you have to leverage, but you have to bring in assets, right? And you have to appreciate the value of the asset. You appreciate the value of the asset for less than what it costs you to appreciate it. And so if you bring in an asset that is tax deductible and you put in $1 towards that asset and that asset puts on $2 worth of gain or $2 worth of value, for every dollar that you put into that asset, you should be getting $2 back. And that is how you generate cash flow. You know, and uh, that is one way for you to generate cash flow. Uh, you know, uh, you know, 
That is how, excuse me, that is how I generate cash flow. So how do I make the twelve to $14,000 a month? I just gave you the answer. I bring home a, a one to one and a half type commodity animal. I go on the feeder cattle market. I deduct 10% from that number. I, t I, I take that number and then I cut it in half. I go to the sale barn with that number and I bring home one to one and a half type medium large frame animals for that for that amount. And then when I appreciate the value of the asset, in other words, I make them heavier, right? I get them heavier, I castrate them, I give them all their vaccinations, I wean them, et cetera, et cetera, right? I do all these things and it increases the value of the asset. If I put in $1,000 to raise, to bring in the animal and raise it, and I get $1,800, then that $800, that, you know, the $800 difference is the money that goes into my pocket. That is how I make money. That, that is the entire formula. You do not need to learn anything else. That is the entire formula. I've, I've said that like 15 times up until this point. I've legitimately said that 15 times. More probably more and the answer is never going to change. That is how I make money. You know, I bring home an asset. I appreciate the value of the asset for more than what it costs me to appreciate the asset. And when I sell the asset... The, I, the 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 uh, the difference between the the amount that I get for the asset and what I put into the asset is the money that goes into my pocket. That's it. That's the entire formula. You legitimately, if 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 you just legitimately just absorb that answer and remember it and and regurgitate it anytime you ask yourself, how, how, you know, how am I going to make money today? How am I going to make money today? And you want to get in the cattle business or you want to get in the farming business? Regurgitate that answer to yourself. I go and I, and I purchase a tax deductible asset. I purchase that asset and I appreciate the value of the asset for more than what it costs me to appreciate it. And then the difference of that number is the money that goes into your pocket. That is the entire cattle business. That, that, is, that is the entire formula for how I make money. Legitimately, want, that, that is like a, how I make 98% of all of my money. That is how I do it, you know, legitimately, and I've, I've given you, I've given you all the answer like uh, 15 times, more than 15 times, and the answer is never going to change. I'm not going to say never, but the answer is not going to change, you know, any time, any, and if the answer does change, I will let you know. But this weekend, I'm going, I'm going to go and take a look at two properties. I'm going to take a look at two properties, and if I like either one of them, I'm going, I'm going to put it under contract by next week. And uh, if I don't like either one of them, I am going to take a look. I'm going to stay in the market and keep a look at, at what I should, uh, you know, what I should do. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the market. And when I find something that I like, I'll purchase it. But, uh, you know, uh, with my next uh, asset purchase, with my next uh, uh, real estate asset purchase, I will, I will have over a million dollars in assets, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, something that I didn't even realize was happening, but uh, I will have over a million dollars in assets. And uh, if I, uh, you know, well, when I, not if, it is a matter of when, right? It is a matter of when. It's not a matter of if at this point. I already know that I make a boatload of money. You know, uh, I, I make a boatload of money running cattle. I mean, uh, I mean, I just do, right? I mean, take a look around. I mean, do I, I mean, it just is what it is. I make a boatload of money running cattle. And uh, it is a matter of when at this point. And, uh, you know, even on just this 10-acre field, I, I, I bring home almost a quarter million dollars a year. And so uh, if I go and I, and I, and I add a 50-acre farm onto my, uh, onto my business, I mean, I'll probably be uh, netting a return of, uh, of over 25% on the entirety of my asset portfolio. And so... This weekend, I'm going to go and take a look at a couple of properties. And if I like either one of them, I am going to have it under contract by next week. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.